Skin tones. Skin tones are probably the only tonal range within the color wheel that's going to be a dead giveaway that your colors are off. As humans, we instinctively know what skin tones are supposed to look like. We know some skin tones are darker, some are lighter, and we also know that people are not supposed to be purple, they're not supposed to be orange like an Oompa Loompa, or green like the Incredible Hulk. Good thing I got the standing desk because my chair just broke. What's going on guys? Back at it again with another tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to use DaVinci Resolve's qualifier in order to target your skin tone so that way you could grade them however you want. This technique is super easy and it really opens up some creative potential for color grading because of how precise it is. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. All right, welcome to DaVinci Resolve's color page once again. This is the frame we will be working with. I want to target my skin tone so that way I can make it green so that way I appear to be like the Incredible Hulk. To do that, I'm going to come down here to the middle of the bottom half of the screen and click on Qualifier. We get something that looks like this. And one thing I want to make sure I have selected is the eyedropper tool, which can be found here. Qualifier. You just want your cursor to look like the eyedropper because we're going to use this eyedropper to select our skin tones. Before we do that, we're going to make sure our highlight tool is selected. Click that. Remember from my previous tutorial, the highlight tool will mask out whatever is not in the qualification. So let's start qualifying. Down here in the selection range, you wanna make sure that the first icon is selected for the picker. These other two icons, these are all refinements for after the fact of selecting our color channel. So make sure picker is selected. We're gonna click on the skin. Boom, not bad. We have most of the skin selected already. We could refine this a little bit more by adding, clicking on the plus, and let's add the shadows. You could actually just click and hold and drag the eyedropper tool across. Okay, so it got a lot of the background as well. It got a lot of this red. It's got some of the curtains, my computer monitor here, right? Let's try to remove the red. So let's adjust the center of our selection and push it away from red. So you could grab on the selection itself and push it away from red, or you could use this. It'll do the same thing. Okay, pretty good. We got rid of most of the red background. Let's do it a little bit more. Okay. Let's see if we could play around with some more of the adjustments to get rid of the background up here in the top left. And at this point, I'm just playing around with all the options just to see how I could refine this to get just the skin. And it is just depending on what kind of image you have. All right, as far as the selection range, that's what I'm gonna go with. And let's go over here to matte finesse and play around with this. So denoise will get rid of all that noise and choppiness and artifacts down here. So we'll push that, it'll blur that out nicely. Pretty good. Let's see what happens if we push and clean up the blacks. Clean blacks will clean up whatever is inside your selection range. So it's going to push your mask into your selection range. Uh, clean whites will do the opposite. It's going to push your selection range out towards the masked area. So if you keep your eye on my arm here, if I push the clean white up or to the right, you see that more of my arm is becoming visible and more of the mask is going away. Let's 
go to page two of the map finesse and see if we could refine this even more. Let's go radius. All right, it tightens up the mask a little bit. Let's park it at maybe four. Iterations, I wonder what this does. So it chokes the mask a little bit more. Really refining it. Black clip. And white clip. Oh, okay. I like this white clip. Maybe not too much. Let's actually turn down the black. All right. So from here, let's start making everything green. I'm going to go to offset and push the hell out of the green to make myself look like the Hulk. Now let's uncheck or unclick our highlight and see what we have. Okay. Okay, so we're missing a bunch of the shadows on my arm here and the fingertips and my fist. And we want to get rid of the green in the upper left of the frame because that stuff's not green. Just playing around with these adjustments to see what'll work. There is no right way to do this. There are only effective ways. All right, that looks a lot better as far as my skin selection goes. Now we do want to get rid of the green that appears in the background because of our imperfect selection range. And the way I'm going to do that is just with power windows. So on the icon that looks like a circle next to our qualifier, it says window, we'll click that. These are shapes, gradients, and custom mask tools that you could use to draw a mask over whatever it is you want. So I'm going to make my own custom mask. So I'm gonna select this and I'm going to draw a mask around the parts that I don't want green. So right now it actually took the green away from my skin and kept it inside the mask. We want to invert that. So we'll come down here and click this to invert it. Now it removed the green or most of it from the background where we don't want it and it kept it in my skin. Now we could just leave it like this, but the subject, me, I will be in motion as soon as I play the video and there will be times or frames that the mask isn't covering the appropriate parts. So to make sure that our green qualification stays on my skin, but also hides the green in the background, we're going to have to keyframe this. So down here on the bottom right, on the middle of the screen, we're going to click this, it says keyframes. We're going to, right now this is our only node, so we're just going to make this keyframe corrector one. Now highlighting this orange will tell DaVinci that we want to start keyframing, but it hasn't made a keyframe yet. And you could drag this playhead to wherever you want to start the keyframe, but for simplicity's sake, I'll just start it right here. And to create our first keyframe, I'm just going to give our mask a little bump. Bump. And there we have our first keyframes. From here, you could go frame by frame and mask the appropriate areas. This is going to be your most time consuming part of this process. Only if your qualification doesn't work 100% or if your subject is moving around a lot. But in order to sell the effect, this is what you are going to have to do. Next frame. You get the idea. You just go frame by frame and adjust the mask so that way it's hiding and revealing the appropriate parts. And that's pretty much it guys. Easy, right? If you have any questions for me, don't be shy to ask them. Hit up the comment section down below. While you're down there, also tell me, is it time for a new shirt? If you haven't noticed in all my videos, I rotate between two flannel shirts. These shirts are the only things I have that make me look semi-professional, but casual and approachable. But if you think it's time for me to try out a new shirt, please comment below. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.